Looking at the world of football, most times it is impossible to produce elite goalkeepers, defenders and midfielders however, the same cannot be said about strikers. A first striker at first is one who appears in football's most critical moment and helps the team out of such critical situations. Amri Teri, a new member of the Japan Football Association during the board meeting says that it is clear that Japan is at an impasse when it comes to their World Cup performance. Unless they want to repeat that particular performance next time, she recommends they develop a plan, and she goes on to probe the president. The president Hirotoshi Biratsuda, the president of JFA, is of the opinion that after all, football is nothing but business as their profits are good so what do they need to change? He feels that so long as they maintain the Japan national team's brand, they will be fine reaping the profits generated by it. He goes on to suggest that they get themselves one of those foreigner coaches to give the team the spark they will need amidst all those Japanese players then if the team gets on a losing streak, they go on ahead and fire the player and place all the blame on him. The other board members burst into laughter seeing it is a simple thing to do and also remembering players they had done the same to such as Kazu, Akachin and others. He tells them they should value their current situation more. He goes ahead to ask Anri Terry what she will do if her so-called reform affects their bottom line. She tells them it should not be difficult to maintain a higher standard given that they are a country represented in every World Cup tournament certainly. The Japan national team has been at a standstill for the past 25 years. She goes on to let them know but apologizing first for her words that if that particular situation remains the same, Japan will never win the World Cup. The president burst out laughing asking her if she really thinks they will win the World Cup which he agreed to. She tells him that Japan passing the playstyle will carry us to the world stage. They will win if they keep playing their brand of football because it is her biggest dream to see Japan winning the World Cup. She tells them that they keep saying these things but sentiment won't advance them past the round of 16. Mr. President Hirotoshi Buritsuda says he cannot take his eyes off them and she might say that but does she have a plan to change their current situation? She goes on to tell them that it is up to them to create the ultimate player that can lead Japan to its first World Cup. She suggested they hire Jinpachi Igo to become the coach of the players so he can help them break down the foundations of the current national team. The Saitama Prefecture Finals of the National High School Football Qualifiers While Ikainen has a score point of zero, Matsukazi Kokuo has a score point of one putting in a tough position. The spectators continue to scream Asasi's name telling to go on and possess his last chance and screams for him to shoot his shot. All that was on the head of Ikainen High School senior year's mind was the Nationals. Winning this particular match gives them the opportunity to get to the Nationals which they have always hoped to be on. He kept on asking which way he should go and while running to another direction. He was told to go another direction and soon he came face to face with the goalkeeper of Matsuke's Kokuo High School and all he could think was the fact that he had to shoot in the thought of the Nationals. There were screams telling him to go for it and score the goal and his teammates telling him not to go for it because if he should shoot it, it will be the end for them. They went on asking what he was doing and why he was not passing the ball as he should be stating their slogan all for one and one for all. Isaga's thoughts were the fact that though football is a sport played by 11 players he will go ahead and score the goal and put them in a tie. Just then he passed the ball choosing to go for the team play and as he passed it, it went to the goal kick which almost shattered Asagi. Immediately, the goalkeeper of Matsuke's Kokuo played the ball and the team members screaming counter urged a player named Kira to go for the ball. Kira went with the ball at full speed and scored for the other team. This left Ikainen High School with zero points while Matsuke's with two points as the winner. Matsuke's team members jubilated in joy as this earned them the right to play at the Nationals while Ikainen players cried in pain for losing the opportunity of playing in the Nationals. Reporters swapped all around Kira asking him how he felt about being able to play for Japan's U18 national team. He tells them he couldn't have done it by himself stating that the reason for all his success is from having a capable team behind him that he can depend on and while winning the qualifiers for nationals is just one more step for him. Right there and then, he has got his sights on winning nationals with this team. There were cheers all around from fans, especially young girls calling out his name with love and saying how they like how he cares about his teammates. The losing team was soon gathered together by their coach and were told how they performed well, but as much as it hurt, it was the end of the road for them. It is the last match for the third-year students and for some of them, it was their last time playing football but they should be proud of those days they fought together as a team. In tears, the coach tells them they will remember the defeat for the rest of their lives, but they don't ever think it was meaningless and remember it fondly. The team members weep in pain saying there is no meaning to life as a result of their defeat.
The coach says to him, Ikainen High will always be the best team in all of Japan but Isagi refuses saying they are just some team that fell one step short of playing at nationals. As Isagi rode his bicycle home in grief and dejection, he felt sorry for himself and Mr. Noel Noah, his role model. He was just some unknown second-year player and it was almost impossible for a second-year forward from his team to become a great hero like Mr. Noah. It looks like he won't be able to make the dream to be like his role model who at the age of 31 forward for France national team and in Europe became the best player of the year in 2018. For so long, Isagi strove to be like him watching him play and observing him as he sits and watches him on the television set. He was entranced by his playstyle and started playing while he was but a little boy. He played and played football. He remembered all his coach words saying all for one and one for all, how they shouldn't dare to think that football is just one with one player alone stating that Ikainen High is a team with its sights set on the nationals with all players together. He thought one day, he would become Japan national team's ace striker and even went on to have a silly dream of winning the World Cup but it looked like his dream would be just that and nothing more because if he were to keep on playing football seriously, he will still have oh give it up in the end since he has one year left until he graduate. All his imaginations about being on interviews saying he got his sights set on winning nationals with his team. He doesn't think he could become a pro at his level if he thinks about it because even though their opponents were in the same year with them, he could feel the gap between them and bet that guy will become a pro as to how good he was and how well he played back there. He continues to ponder on the match, thinking maybe he would have or if he had shot the ball. If he hadn't passed it back then would his fate have changed then? They didn't lose because he chose to go for team play and also, what ifs were pointless in football because football is a sport played with 11 people so one person cannot win on their own. As he rode on, he continued to soliloquize as some little kids walked by and began to call him crazy, dangerous because he was talking to himself. Suddenly he burst out crying stating how he wanted to win the football match badly. When he got home, he sadly announced that he was home as his mother welcomed him back and asked him how the game went. He burst out crying saying how they had lost the game. His father, who didn't really understand much, apologized for not really knowing much about all that football stuff. His mother told him how bad it was that they as she had already made tonkatsu for the day. She remembers that there was a letter for him and gives it to him telling him that the letter was from the Japan Football Association. Isagi was surprised and dumbfounded asking what the letter was. Opening the letter, he discovers that it was a selection for a player improvement project which he was being invited to participate in. The parents, not knowing much about football, asked if it was a good thing. On getting to Japan Football Union, Isagi still having no idea why they had chosen him kept on thinking if he was on a candid camera show because the invitation was so unreal to him. Why will they go into all that detail then skip the important parts where they were supposed to meet and think about why they had scouted him? Still pondering on the turn of events, he met Kira, a team member from Matsuke's high that scored the last goal that made them lose the game. Nice to meet you Kira told him as he asked him if he remembered him confirming if he was Asagi from Ikainen High. Asagi confirms that he is the one and goes on to ask if he was also called there too. He was surprised that Ryasuke Kira knew who he was given the fact that they had lost to them. Kira confirms that he remembered him because he had a hunch that he was quite a player. This made Asagi surprised as he asked him if he was sure about his comment or if he was just kidding around with him. Kira went on to say how he had noticed earlier in their match that he had impressive field perspective and a high football intelligence quotient, and how he had thought that if they were on the same team, he would make good passes. As they walked along, they pondered on where they were supposed to meet the union members even though Kira had called the union earlier, but they were not picking. They continued talking and Kira couldn't help but notice Isagi being in awe, and talking to him in a formal way like he was way older than him. He asked them to act like the same year mate and stop acting all polite to him. Isagi, still in awe, could not help but notice how amazing Kira was being so talented in both football and socializing and acknowledging someone like him. As they walked into a room, they met a room filled with a lot of guys of which Kira could recognize some who happened to be ace in their various high schools just like the both of them. Isagi is surprised that they were all forward even including those who were messies of their own school. Congratulations, you unpolished gems, Jinpachi Ego comes on the podium saying how 300 of them all under 18 strikers have been chosen solely based on his criteria and biases. He tells them what his job was, which was to make Japan a team capable of winning the World Cup. He puts it in simple terms telling them that Japan only requires one thing to become the strongest powerhouse in football and that is the creation of a revolutionary striker. They were all put in a state of surprise, wondering who the man before them was and asking each other if they knew if they knew him. 
He goes on to say he will forge the best striker in the world through a certain project, and that is the creation of a revolutionary striker from the 300 of them there. For that purpose, they have built a facility called Blue Lock and they will not be able to go home but live in the building and for that period of time, they are to forget their football career. If they are able to survive the Blue Lock and defeat the other 299, the last player standing will have become the best striker in the world. They all began to clamor saying how they couldn't agree to what he had said, stating how to most of them. Their team is their priority particularly for those of them who will participate in the Nationals. There was no way they were going to accept those kinds of terms because they would not throw their team away. Jinpachi Ego tells them to get lost saying they were all fucked in the head wondering how they will prefer to become a high school champion in their shithole county choosing their team over becoming the best striker in the world. He tells them to get lost if they were planning to leave, telling them that Japan is the best country in the world when it comes to organizational skills in football which most people attribute to their innate national character, but looking at them. He cringes at the thought of Japan's football future but before they get any ideas, in everything else, they were second rate. He goes further to ask them what football was to them. He asked them if it was a sport where they see their bonds as being important which will make them play for their teammates or sport where they try to score goals in teams of 11 members. He disagrees with them saying that way of thinking was the reason why Japan lacks football skills and promises to show them what it is all about. Football is, at its core, a sport about scoring goals even at the expense of one's teammates. The best player is the one that scores the most goals. The high schoolers were all in confusion wondering what he was saying because it made no sense to them. He tells them if they want to play pretend football, then they should get lost already. Kira gets really furious asking Jinpachi Ego to take all what he said back because he was wrong about it all, stating that players like Honda, Kagawa and many others were their stars and all of those who shaped the Japan national team's lineup. The value of team play instilled in the national team is the same that is a part of them. You mean the squad that is yet to win a single World Cup Jinpachi Ego asked, saying that he didn't care about the trash. He tells them he wasn't talking about becoming the best team in the world but about being the best striker in the world. Talking about Neil Noah, T goes on to say, he managed to win the Ballon d'Or over astounding players like Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, and in his words, he feels better losing 3 minutes 4 after scoring a hat trick than winning only by 1 minutes 0 with an assist and one of the best football players of the 20th century. Eric Cantona said that when the Seagulls follow the trawler, it is because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Peel arguably the best football player in history and the winner of three World Cups once said that he is the best forward, midfielder, defender, goalkeeper. They are all revolutionary strikers and they could all say that because they are the best. Jinpachi Ego tells them all that the one thing that Japan's football lacks is their extraordinary egoism, and unless they have the ego to match, they will not become the greatest strikers in the whole world. He says his purpose was to create such a player in Japan so from the corpses of 299 players, one hero will rise in all his glory. Asagi in confusion says how he feels what Jinpachi Ego was saying was all shades of wrong because until that moment, no one had ever told him something like that. He says he is just a random striker and it is impossible for some no-name guy like him. Jinpachi Ego referring to them as the unpolished gems asked the one last question telling them to imagine they were in the finals of the World Cup playing under the eyes of 80,000 spectators in the stadium on the field with a score of 0 minus 0 at the stoppage time of the second half, the very last play. A teammate has managed to pass the ball to him, being one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, and having a teammate 6 meters to the right. One pass to the teammate will probably make him score the goal. The hopes of all of Japan lie on his shoulders, he is at a turning point at the World Cup Finals. If he desires without hesitations, he shoots and steps through the gate, having everyone on the field literally supporting him and that he referred to as rebellious egoism. Football is a sport to develop all of them as strikers telling them to throw their common sense away for when they are on the field, they are stars. Isaga seeing how the words made him shiver given that he had already lost hope before realizing that no one had ever told him something like that before. Jinpachi Ego continues by telling them that their greatest joy is scoring points and nothing else which is how a striker thinks living for the excitement of that very moment which is changing the shape of their fate. At the end of the long talk, most of them were convinced and willing to go for it rushing into the blue lock realizing at the most critical moment in football who appears. To produce elite goalkeepers, defenders and midfielders is possible in the world of football however. The same cannot be said of strikers because a first-rate striker is one.
Amri walks into the hall stating how the future of Japan's football was in the hands of those 300 players. She tells Mr. Ego that she will leave it all in his hands while he says perhaps they will have to sacrifice 299 players for their goal. The true essence of Blue Lock is the sacrifice because that will create one true striker above them all. He asked her for them to begin knowing that it will become football's most critical moment. In order for Japan to win a World Cup, they will create the best striker in the world which is why 300 of the best high school forwards have been gathered for the project. They all began to move in while they were given uniforms and things like their wallets. Phones were all confiscated. Each person's uniform had a given number and that of Asagi was 299 with the letter Z they were to go into the rooms matching their uniform letters. Just like that, Asagi began walking through the labyrinth of concrete and when he got to his room, he met others who were meant to be his roommate. On getting to his room, Asagi met Kira and they were both glad that had a familiar face that they could mingle with each other, while other boys complained about how they wouldn't be able to send direct messages to the girl. Just then, Kira clothes come off and Isagi looks in awe as to how muscular he was. He looks at him and realizes he's not as muscular as he is. Kiramu Igarashi comes up to Kira to introduce himself, referring to him as the treasure of Japan and how glad he is to be sharing a room with him. He went on to introduce himself to Isagi and comment on how even though he was destined to inherit, he hated having his life written out like that so he made a promise with his father to forget about inheriting if he became a pro player. He continues speaking about how motivated he was by Mr. Ego, and just then, Mr. Ego appears on the screen in the room and asks them if they were done changing. He tells them how the people in their various rooms will be their roommates and at the same time, be their rival. He went further to let them know that the numbers attached to their uniform represented their ranking because they have estimated their potential based on his and his peers' calculation. Asagi realizes that his ranking his way low given the fact that he is on number 299. Their ranking will change daily based on several factors such as going up and down during training or the results of their games. The best five players will participate in a certain tournament six months from then and they become the selected strikers for Japan's U-20 Nationals team playing for the World Cup. Those who are defeated at Blue Lock will be permanently barred from Japan's national teams because they are looking for one crucial component there which is what they will measure there in the facility. Soon it was time to play tag there and then in their rooms. The person with the ball after 136 seconds can get out of Blue Lock. They were not allowed to use their hands. Tag is one of the many exercises pro players warm up with. The egoism test he has devised will provide great insight into the selfishness behind the strikers. They all began to think of what would happen to them if they were to lose at any point. Realizing their victory all depended on the tag, they gave it a shot and started the game. They all went after the ball, especially Giramu who attacked them all with all seriousness fearing if he didn't win he was going to have to inherit his father's position as a monk. Kira, still against Mr. Ego's ideology, wasn't convinced of such a method of playing. There is no way pros actually train like they are being told to train. While Isagi and Kira were reluctant to play in such a way, Giramu went on with the ball and just then another forward Rensu Kunigami took the ball and with full speed, hitting them. Isagi realizes that he had to hit someone given that he had just one minute until the time elapsed. Looking at Kira, Isagi realizes he doesn't really stand a chance at hitting him with the ball and thereby chooses the lowest rank which is Guramu to attack. Looking at the few minutes left, Isagi realizes he is face to face with Guramu who is seated on the floor after a fall begging him not to take the shot as it will end his career as a footballer for life. Isagi became reluctant but understood then for the first time what it really meant. That every time he wins there are others who lose, and for him to accomplish his dreams, he has to completely destroy the dreams of another. With 15 seconds left of his time, he realizes he hadn't come there to trample on others but to become the best in the world rather he had come to defeat those who are stronger than him. Shooting the ball at Giramu will not change anything about it because in actual sense, Giramu was in place 300 while he was in place 299 which made him stronger than Giramu. Turning around from Giramu he faced other players with a few seconds left aiming at Maguru Bakira, one of the strongest who placed 290. While going at it focusing on Bakira he played the ball which met with Kira but he couldn't get the ball off him and he ended up losing the game. Kira lost the game and was expelled from the blue lock. They were all shocked, including Kira, who asked why is being eliminated given that he is Japan's treasure. Why will they erase the future of a player as talented as he is? Mr. Ego asking to look at their surroundings tells them how everything they were doing was related to football. Looking around, they realize that the whole room is the exact same proportions as a penalty area. In other words, in that small space, the positioning skills of a striker mean everything. 
one could say it is the domain of a striker about 75% of all goals are scored from that little area. Therefore, those unable to survive under such conditions can hardly qualify to be talented strikers. The skill required by the fleeing side is tactical awareness. In other words, positioning. As for the pursuer, what they need is not only accurate dribbling but the precision to make a shot that will hit their target. That is what makes it optimal football training. Kira still insisted that it wasn't right given that a game of football was given on the last more than 90 minutes but how was he supposed to know all those things in two seconds? Mr. Ego went on to tell him how he was given the average 136 seconds an average player will get. He could have used one second to give a shot but he didn't and ended up wasting his time. If it were to be in the middle of a real match, standing in the penalty area being the very last play of the game and a teammate's shot doesn't reach the goal, and instead of going after it, he had already given up. If only he had tapped the ball with his knee, he could have been saved from his own mistake. The one in a tag game is the one who has the ball, decides who they want to win but also decides who they want to lose. A striker is one who keeps on attacking until the very last second. A striker is one who carries all the responsibility on his back. Both Yoichi Asagi and Meguru Bakira are perfect examples of people who rather than do what is best for the team had the tenacity and courage to pursue their own will and that is the egoism that he is looking for. Kira was kicked out and all Asagi could feel is pure regret wishing he hadn't kicked the balls accusing Meguru for playing the ball to him. Mr. Ego made them understand that it was pure nonsense, but then, that is the world either one wins or loses. He asked them how they felt, stating that all their previous plays were for weaklings because they just experienced danger, confusion, and shiver. Since each time they rejoice in that feeling, their ego will steadily grow, and they will need it to climb to the top and be the best striker in the world. He congratulated them saying they have passed Blue Lock's entrance test. The room was designed for no more than 11 people so from then on, they will cohabitate. Wataru Kyuon, Jingo Reichai, Yudai Imamura, Asahi Naruhaya, Okuhito Lemon, Germu Igarashi, Jin Gagamaru, Hayoma Chijiri, Meguru Bakira, Rensuk Kunigami, Yoichi Asagi were all to cooperate with each other and also betray each other. They and their rivals that they have to trample are Blue Lock's Team Z. It has been three days since they came to Blue Lock and they were on the running test all competing with each other. They have spent the last three days doing mainly endurance tests, and everyone going at each other just to be the best. Jingo Reichai who happens to be in the 294th place kept on getting on everyone's nerves. This bothered Asagi and one of the team members Wataru Kuon admonished him not to let his attitude get to him. Next was the jumping test between them while Kuon was 68 centimeters, Asagi was 61 centimeters. Kuon probes him asking if he was okay and he tells him that his confidence was taking a hit at that moment. At the blue lock, daily activities are all arranged to a precise schedule. Other than the usually serve rice and miso soup in the cafeteria, they also get different meals based on their rank. During their rest time, Isagi couldn't sleep because he was too nervous to sleep thinking everyone there was better than he is and he may be expelled at that rate. He remembers how he had kicked the ball at Kira that made him get expelled from Blue Lock, promising himself not to get burned by jealousy no matter what challenges he had to go through in Blue Lock. During Team Z's indoor training, Isagi asked Bakira why he passed the ball to him during the tag game. He went on to ask if it was because he thought he would get rid of Kira. Akira agreed with him and Asagi asked him why he did that and he went on to tell him that he did it because there is a monster lurking inside him. He tells him that the monster was the one saying all those things but only when he is playing football. Just then, Bakira begins to kick the ball. Asagi asks him why he did what he did and he tells him the monster made him do it. He goes on to say that the monster told him to pass the ball to him because in him there is a monster. Isagi is dumbfounded as to what he was talking about. He said he listens to the monster's voice to guide his football. He goes on to ask Isagi if he also hears the monster's voice but Isagi could not help but be more dumbfounded. Isagi becomes curious as to how the monster works and goes on to question him more about it. He tells him that his cue to survive inside Blue Lock was his monster. Messi, Ronaldo and even Neil Noah and other legends have their own monsters deep inside their heart, and that gives the proof that they are strikers. He tells Asagi that is why he is glad he had come to Blue Lock because it gave him the opportunity to meet him. The monster inside of him had given him the courage to keep going. Asagi, convinced by him, promised to survive no matter what. He became proud of him, saying those were the eyes of a real striker. Just then, an announcement came on saying they had finished compiling the test results from the last three days and they were commanded to hurry back to their rooms and have a look at their new rating. 
Usagi looking at his ranking on his uniform discovers that he had climbed a few ranks from 299 to 274 while Germu also climbed to the rank of 275. Mr. Ego came on the screen asking them how they were enjoying their lives at Blue Lock. One of the forwards asked him if living in such a place will make them comfortable. Mr. Ego tells him that shitty football calls for a shitty environment so he should keep shut. He goes on to talk about Blue Lock and how the facility is arranged into five different strata. They have 25 teams, ranging from B to Z with each set of five times in a stratum living in the same conditions. Also, each team is formed by the ranks of their players in other words. Team B's players are from 1st to 11th, Team C's from 12th to 22nd, and so on. While Team Z is the worst stratum of all, stratum number 5 is the team made up of players between the 265th to 275th position. Players of higher ranks from the other blocks have the better meals and training equipment which are meant to represent the lifestyle of those strikers at the very top. That is where the finest football players get to live like kings. Mr. Ego encourages them to win so they too can see such a lifestyle. That is what it means to be a blue lock. Blue lock's first collection was to begin at that point in time. SAE Itoshi, being interviewed by Nihil from the Football Journal, was asked if they will get to see him play in the J League. It may be a bit sudden but up until that moment, he has been in the lower categories for Real Madrid, a world-renowned institution. But before getting a chance to play for their first team, he now returned to Japan. SAE Itoshi goes on to reply to his question stating that he would rather die. He would rather be with Germany's college students rather than play football in the country. Nihei went on to say, SAE was chosen by PIFA to be part of their Youth World 11th team and on top of that, he has a very promising midfielder many teams would love to have in their lineup. While he is certain to be the player that will lead Japan's national team and represent the country, he went to ask what were his thoughts and expectations regarding that. SAE tells him he has no interest in it whatsoever not only could he ever expect to win a championship with such a squad, it is not his dream to begin with. That would be winning the Champions League. He mentions how he was wrongly born in the country because there is no forward in the country worthy of receiving one of his passes. He walks out telling Nihil that his manager will handle the rest of the interview. The manger in distress warns about his attitude saying that the media will hate him for his words. He is less concerned about telling his manager that he was just in Japan to renew his passport, and he couldn't care less even if they hate him, in order to create a true striker capable of leading Japan to its first World Cup title. Thus, they gathered 300 exceptional strikers from all over Japan, they call it the Blue Lock Project. People begin to ponder about the project being just a revolutionary project, if it is worth the high schoolers throwing away their current lives for it. Some went on to ask that they had said the futures of those 299 kids will be sacrificed for the sake of one, but were not their parents opposed to the plan. Even if the project were to succeed and give birth to a true striker, how can they guarantee Japan's national team winning a cup at all? They made them understand that they have not only the permission of the players but also releases signed by their parents. Anri goes on to say that the goal was to create Japan's national football and create its own hero. Back in Blue Lock, Mr. Ego made them understand that the first selection starts next week. The first selection will be between them the 55 players of the fifth stratum consisting of a round robin of the five teams within it. When all is said and done, it is only the top two teams who will advance to the second selection. It is all or nothing. Shijiri asked him if he was saying that all the 11 players from Team Z are playing but are they not all forwards? A team made solely of 11 forwards there is no way that can be normal. Mr. Ego tells them that in the beginning, football was a sport played with every member as a forward but that is simply one part of football's long history. They may have the positioning system and tactics that come with it ingrained in their foolish heads. It would be only natural for all of them to play as forwards. They were all surprised seeing that their football will begin from the starting point and from there, fix their knowledge of football from the scratch. Back at the press conference, Nari went on to give them the history of Japan's football. For nearly 25 years, Japan's national team has time and time again evolved exponentially on a global scale. And that was thanks to the dream they yearned for together as a country. In 1992, the J League was founded. In 1997, they earned a spot in their very first World Cup. In 2002, they reached the round of 16 in the WC held by their country and South Korea. In 2010, they managed yet again to get past the group phase despite all the naysayers. In 2018, they drove the contending Belgium to a corner. They had reached closer than ever yet it was so painful that they had fallen just one step short of being among the very best countries in the world. 
but it also meant that the football fans acknowledged them because they had seen Japan was a force to be reckoned with. With all that being said, it is said that, if they want to cross that very last step, the state of Japan's nationals cannot as it is if they want the success they craved for. The crowd continues to clamor stating how their predecessors had their eyes set on the World Cup's glory. They wanted for Japan to carve out their part of the football world, and they backed up that will. Thus, Anri proclaimed it to be the time for the Japanese dream to be revived. Mr. Ego goes on to tell the forwards to throw out what they think of as common sense, reject it and cram the new mentality deep down those brains of theirs. The most important thing for Japan to become the best country in the world is not the teamwork between the 11 players. The sheer presence of players like them have changed the sport forever and new defensive systems were created for the sole purpose of stopping them and overcoming those systems. They evolved ever newer tactics. Just like that, one player, within one team from one country, was able to change the world that is the sport of football. From then on, Japan's football will enter a new stage, one not led by adults who have lost sight of that dream but by the star born from these 300 high school students. When they refer to the World Cup, they can prepare themselves to compete for it. All of them in blue lock are primed to have courage in the new dream of Japan. The forwards born in the new Japan will be judged with her own eyes. The Sagi promised himself to be the last one standing, setting his eyes on the goal by crushing the weak, even the ones defending. The team agreed to allow Isagi to pick the position he wants while the rest of the team will follow their ranks. Isagi agreed to be the forward. The first selection will be a round robin involving all the five teams inside the stratum. Only the top two highest position teams at the end of all ten matches will qualify and the worst three will be eliminated. Meeting, the members of those teams will be immediately expelled from Blue Lock and they will lose the right to play for Japan's national team. However, for those three teams, there is a way to avoid elimination. That is, to be the player who has scored the most goals for their team by the selection's end. It is a system with the purpose of saving the best scorer from each elimination. Players within a team will be ranked according to their number of goals scored but fair play will be accounted for in the system. Those with fewer penalties will have greater chances of winning whether by pursuing their own goals or the team's victory. The fate of every striker will be decided by that first selection they will be holding. This fight will have them all play football from scratch to work on their foundation. The first game will be held two hours from that time between Team X and Team Z back in Team Z locker room. They strategize on how to make their success possible, and then, deciding to allow Isagi be their CF and go for the win. Isagi, not expecting to have a game, soon ponders on what Mr. Ego meant by playing football from scratch. What his plan was, he ponders more. He tells himself that his trial time at Blue Lock had just begun and while it might have been luck to get the shot from Rock Paper Scissors, it is about time he does it well in order to become the best striker in the world. Soon, the game was about to start and a VAR system was to be used for it to assist them with determining fouls. Now it is time for the first 45 minutes of the fifth stratum, the very first game. As the game begins, Asagi begins to feel nervous but he admonishes himself not to feel that way. He might be a low-tier player, second to last in all of Blue Lock, but he just needs to fight till he is the last one standing. The game continued in full swing and then, some of the teammates began playing by Blue Lock's rule by trying to be the best goal scorer of the team. All the strikers realized they had to beat their own teammates, thanks to Blue Lock's rule where the best scorer gets to qualify. He goes on to ask if all of them were all playing for themselves. When Ego said they had to be playing football from the scratch did he mean this crude football where it is every man for themselves? It wasn't football they were all playing but he doesn't have a choice. He has to join them so as not to be disqualified from blue lock. Thank you for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss any future uploads. And if you have any suggestions for the next video, comment below so we can work on it right away.